maybe we could talk a little bit about Cabo Tegra pivoting in, in, in a, a little bit more detail because yeah. I think it's likely to, to, sure. to be here. I, uh, okay. um, I'll tell uh, you more. Uh, 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 Remind people about yeah. how it's administered. And, um, yes. So Cabo Tegavir and Will Pavering, so it's two together. Like I said, one is an integrase inhibitor and one is a non-nucleoside. They currently are being studied to be administered. It's really outer, upper thigh out here. Right, so they go right. here. And currently they're going to be administered not at home yet, but it would right, be right. Um, so administered. Intramuscular injections. Intramuscular right. injections in the triangle that's formed. Right, that's yeah, right, yeah, the right? gluteus medius. The gluteus medius. Back there somewhere. Is Back what I like there to say. somewhere. <laughs> um, and it's it's two, two ml or two cc injections. Yeah. So not a small amount. Um, but I had been studied for every four weeks, but maybe administered as infrequently as every eight, eight weeks. weeks. Yeah. Right yeah, after an oral period, so yeah, a you have to be period. surprised. So yes. that's like an important thing. You have to right. be at yep. least the way it's been studied. You have to the, be suppressed. Exactly, you have to be right. suppressed. So you you have to. And right now, it's more for people people who are either initiating therapy or transitioning, and who are mm -hmm. suppressed, who then take the oral component for suppression, but also to make sure that they're not going to have a reaction before they have this intramuscular injection put in place. And and some people have talked about the kind of the issue of stigma and and the ability to um, kind of this internal stigma or self-stigma, I might not have the term right, of you know having to take a pill every day and, and, and be freed from that. Colleen, I don't know if you've Thought yeah, I mean, that. I think internalized stigma, I think, internalized, is, the, is the word you're looking <laughs> words you're looking for. But right, it's just a constant reminder when you have that that pill bottle on your your you know, bathroom stand that says I'm HIV positive. Um, and if someone's coming over to your home and, and maybe doesn't know that about you and you don't want them to know that about you, but your pills are there and you've got to take them um, every single day. It's a constant reminder that you're sick and you're HIV positive. And so for folks, a lot of folks find it very attractive to think that they're they're not going to have to be reminded every single day when they put pill in mouth that I'm HIV positive. And so I think it could be very important for folks. Um, it also might not be, you know, it, it, because you've changed someone to an injectable, that doesn't mean you've committed them to 30 years of an injectable. No. It could no. be one year or two years right. or, or it may, again, this is kind of fitting into the life, but right. it does have some risks in the injectable. Um, Yes, these drugs do last a long time. <laughs> so after your most recent injection with cabotegravir, that drug can last for a year. Uh, and so people will need to come in uh, and get their injections at, uh, at pretty close to the uh, recommended frequency. If they uh, miss their injections, there is a risk of developing resistance. Um, we, we don't know exactly what those risks are. We'll, I think, learn in the near future a little bit more about the risk for integrase resistance in people uh, who are failing on the regimen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, but that's, I think, a major risk. And although there may be some adherence problems that get solved by the injections, I think that there are other adherence risks that get created. Um, it'll be a little bit more encumbered upon us as providers to ensure that our patients are coming in at the appropriate frequency. Uh, and we may need to modify our practices a little bit. It, in, in Atlanta, um, your 6,000 6, patient clinic, right. how many people, if, if just 10% of individuals yeah, yeah. elect for this, you're, you need a nurse you likely need a dedicated staff person in order to administer these, these injections. Right. Well, actually, 1,200 injections a month because it's two injections. But it's if we co-formulate it with penicillin, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and double Provera. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 